What's going on you guys? Today I'm going to be unboxing, you guessed it, the Nintendo Switch OLED. So there's been a lot of mixed feelings about this brand new console. And the big thing is people are saying it's basically the same as the original Nintendo Switch. And to be honest with you guys, I think so too. The major upgrades are not enough to warrant an upgrade. But if you don't have a Nintendo Switch at all and you're looking to pick up one, now's a good time to grab one because the new updates they're not that crazy, but they're good enough if you're looking for a new Nintendo Switch or if you're just looking to pick it up because you know you want the new upgrade. Things like the display, the onboard storage, the new kickstand, and even the wired LAN port on the dock station. If those things matter to you, then you should definitely consider picking one up. But in this video, I'm going to be unboxing this and giving my first impressions. So I fall on the side of people that do not have a Nintendo Switch, like the original one. So for me, this will be something that I would go for because I'm a big fan of OLED and that coming to a console that's handheld is huge for me. At least that's that's just me personally. I don't, I don't know about you guys. Let me know down in the comment section if you would go ahead and pick up one of these new Nintendo Switch OLEDs just based on the screen. So the last time I owned a Nintendo was the Game Boy Advance. I'm talking the ones with no color. And as soon as I heard that they were coming out with this one, I got a little bit excited. I thought it was going to be a general upgrade, like the internal system, everything was gonna get like, you know, upgraded, like a Nintendo Switch 2, something like that, or a Nintendo Switch Pro. We were all expecting that, let's be honest. If you don't already have a Nintendo Switch, this will feel like, you know, you're getting something brand new as opposed to something that was released a few years ago. As for the price of the new Nintendo Switch, I bought it for about $472.89 Canadian dollars. And this is plus taxes. Okay, let's not waste any more time and let's see what's inside of this box right here, man. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I kind of am. I'm a big fan of unboxing gaming consoles. Okay, so I've got the box right here and I'm gonna first open it up and see what we got in there. So first off, what do we got there? It says right there, plug it in set it up. I think it's how you set up the Nintendo Switch. Well, let's go in and see what's really in here and then we can go from there. I also like the design of this one, the one I got, so the white and black. Honestly, I'm more of a minimalist and I love, you know, white and black. So let's see what this is. We've got the Joy-Cons right here. Nice, 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 I like it. So I don't think there's any difference between the Joy-Cons from this year and the ones from last year. And I hear people complain a lot about Joy-Con drift. So honestly, I hope I don't experience it, but it, it just might happen, man. So right here, we have the handheld Nintendo Switch OLED, and that looks very clean, at least in my opinion, y'all. So we have a seven inch OLED screen on this Nintendo Switch, as opposed to the original one with about 6.2 inches. So that's a lot more space, you know, to play and see and view, plus the fact that it's OLED and everything is going to look a lot more crispy. I'm talking blacks looking blacker, white looking whiter, you know, think iPhone, think OLED TVs. That's just awesome, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan of OLED, so this is going to work perfectly well for me. And as you can see right here, there's not much on this. There's just the basics. Uh, there's the power button right there. Um, I think the volume control, so plus and minus up here. And then uh, we've got the game card. I think this is where you insert whatever game you're going to be playing, the cartridge, whatever that looks like. I think we've got some speakers up here as well. We've got the aux cord input, if you're going to be using that to listen to you know, the gameplay audio and all of that. So that's what I can see right off the rip. As you can see right here at the bottom, we have a USB-C input. I'm not sure if that's for charging or docking it or anything like that, because like I said, I never really had the original Nintendo Switch. I think we've got the stand here as well. I'm just gonna pop that. As you can see, it's the stand, that's it right there. So that's pretty awesome, I like that, I love it, I love it. So the stand apparently is more stable this year than it was last year, like a wider stand is what I'm talking about. So during my review of this console, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also compare it to the original one. So I'm gonna get one of those and look at the differences between the both of them, you know, the major differences, not the internal differences, because there's no difference on the inside when you really think about it, how it plays games, how it operates. Just make sure you're paying attention to that if you're going to be getting one of these over the other one. This is just a manual, man. Health and safety information and usage guidelines. This is an HDMI cable, everyone knows what this is. I'm pretty sure it's an HDMI 2.0 cable because uh, this does not support HDMI 2.1 yet. Hopefully, maybe next year or in two years from now, Nintendo can really come out with some, you know, upgraded console, a Nintendo Switch Pro or a Nintendo Switch 2. Something like that, man. Come on, y'all gotta do better than this. Okay, so we got the power cable here, or power adapter, whatever you wanna call it. Let me get that out. So this makes more sense now. This is the USB-C uh, cable that, that, that goes into the port underneath the device. I can feel something here. So this must be 
the controller holder, like a dock for your controllers, you'd set them here, the Joy-Cons. You can dock it in there and you can turn it into a full blown controller. Those of you guys that are already familiar with Nintendo would already know what this is and how this works. All right, so next up here, as you can see, we have the hand grip controller. So you stick this or you connect this to the Joy-Cons and you can just attach it to your hand. So, and then you work with that. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It's the same thing we did with the controller dock earlier. So all you have to do is slide it in right there and it locks into place and then you can just grab it right here and use it to play. Okay, I think right here we have the docking station. This is how you will connect it to your TV and stuff like that, right there. So white, clean color, clean design, just gets dirty a lot quicker, but me, with me and white, I really take care of things very, very, very well. You know, at least to the best of my ability. On the right side of the dock, we have two USB ports. I'm pretty sure that's gonna come in handy. Okay, so the back comes up as you can see. So we have the AC adapter, which also uses the USB-C port. So I'm pretty sure this is what you would connect the power adapter to, and then you would just duck the uh, Nintendo Switch inside of it to charge it or to you know connect it directly to your TV and whatnot. So, and then we've got a HDMI out. So that's how you would connect it to your TV, obviously. And a LAN input. That's the one I was talking about right there. So a wired connection. I'm pretty sure this is not on the original Switch, so this is a big upgrade for some people that are looking for more stable connections and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and power this on. There's nothing else left in the box, as you guys can see. So we're gonna go ahead and power it on and see what it looks like. One more thing you can do with the Joy-Con controllers is you can dock them directly on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm gonna take them off and dock them there right now. And just like that, we have handheld mode. So this is what you would do if you wanted to bring it around, say you want to game with it, on the road, on the bus, you know, while flying, all that kind of stuff, then this is how you would want to bring it around. And while you're charging this, you're also charging the Joy-Cons. That's the cool thing about this one. There's three ways you can use this, and if you already have a Nintendo Switch, you already know that by now. So the first one we just talked about, handheld mode right here. The next one is gonna be like when you wanna share it with friends or something like that, then you go into tabletop mode. So the last mode that you guys wanna take note of is the docked mode. So for that mode, all you have to do is set it up with your TV, plug in your HDMI to this right here. Once you have this connected to power, your TV, and maybe a wired internet connection, then you're good to go. All you're gonna have to do at that point is dock the OLED switch. So you just do this, basically. So you go right there and you dock it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to power it on, see if they've got some power in it already. Just gonna hold it for about two to three seconds. Okay, so that's the first time I'm turning it on. As you can see, it looks really good, clean. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and choose English. Okay, would you like to connect to a TV and play on a larger screen? Eventually I will. Okay, so right there as you can see, pretty simple. Once you have games, you can then just play them. If you have a game card or you can download software from Nintendo eShop, I'm pretty sure that means you can have games on the console as well as on a game card. Let's see what else they got here. So news, you can check that out if you want it. You go ahead and see what else they got there. Uh, let's go back to the home right there. And then let's see what else they got, a shop, album, controllers, system settings. Let me see controllers and what's in there. Okay, so you can mess around with the controllers, find them out, pair new controllers if you got new ones and stuff like that. Uh, the settings option or menu, we have airplane mode, screen brightness, screen lock, uh, parental controls, internet, data management, all that cool stuff you find in settings, you know? So we go ahead and hit go back right there. I basically have to create one before I can use it. So make sure you're, you know, you have a Nintendo account before going ahead to try this out. Besides the white and black design, gaming on the seven inch OLED is a beauty. There's a lot of vibrant colors and everything looks very rich. Well, I have nothing to compare it against except other OLED displays like TVs, the iPhone and the likes. So far, I'm impressed by the display. This is for sure going to make gaming in handheld mode a lot more fun. So think about it like that. You have more screen area now to work with. So whenever you're playing, you see more, and it just feels better. Everything looks better, everything looks deeper, the screen is brighter, and things just look better overall. So this is only one of the three ways that you can play the Nintendo Switch. This is the handheld mode. This method of gaming on the Switch is probably the most common you'll see people use, and it's just gotten better with that seven inch OLED display. In order to use the second method of gaming with the Switch, you need to pull out that little flap at the back, so the wider adjustable stand. So this is how you will play in tabletop mode. As you can see right here, I've got Metroid dead on the screen, and I'm just going to game in this mode, which is really cool 
in its own way, especially if you want to play with somebody else, say a two player game or something like that. This mode has also been improved since the adjustable stand is now more stable as opposed to the original one on the original Switch. So that's going to make gaming in this mode a lot safer, which is great since you definitely don't want to damage your Nintendo Switch, regardless of if it's OLED or the regular one. With this method, you want to disconnect both of the Joy-Cons and just play directly. You can also use the Joy-Con controller dock to turn both Joy-Cons into a full-blown controller. Whichever route you decide to take, let me know if you're going to be gaming in tabletop mode or if you do game in tabletop mode on your current Switch console. The final method which I really, really wish I could view in 4K quality is the docked mode. So this mode you can only view in 1080p HD quality. This method has also been improved with the addition of the LAN port which allows you to directly connect your internet to your Switch. So that way you have more stable connection for online gameplay. All you need to do to use this method is disconnect the Joy-Cons from the Nintendo Switch and then just dock it on the docking station. That's it. So you make sure that you got that docking station connected to power as well as the HDMI cable connected to your TV. This method gives you a larger display to work with. So for those of you guys that enjoy playing on larger screens, you can get that with the Nintendo Switch. And I know those of you guys that have the original one already know that. The only thing that I've noticed with this method is that you can't really get that quality you get from the 7 inch OLED display of the Switch on your TV. I don't know if it's going to be different if you use an OLED TV, but this TV that I'm using is not an OLED TV, it's just a regular 4K HDR TV. It still looks very good, everything looks very clean, but the colors don't look as deep and as rich as on the console that's all i'm saying okay so that's all there is to the new nintendo switch oled so the major highlights for this are the seven inch oled display which gives you more room or more viewing area there's also the internal storage that's now up to 64 gigabytes which is a lot more for your storing needs Playing in tabletop mode has also been improved with the new adjustable stand, the wider one. Finally, docked or TV mode now has LAN connectivity, so that's going to give you stronger internet connection overall. Okay, so far, what I think is there hasn't been any major upgrades to the Nintendo Switch that should make people go ahead and grab a new one if they already have the old one. Just grab it if you don't already have one or if you just feel like, you know what, I wanna just have that OLED display or I wanna have better stand or I wanna have more storage. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and hit the gold bell icon right next to the subscribe button to turn on notifications so you're notified whenever I post new videos. I'll see you guys in my next video. It's your boy Midas. And I'm out, y'all.